Yes, my name is Gaurish. Uh, I'm from the mechanics. And uh, uh, let me start with one uh, note of thanks to some of our partners. Right? And uh, every time I come here, uh, I think, you know, what should I be speaking about before a bunch of entrepreneurs who have far, far bigger companies than what I, I would ever build sometimes. Some of you are an inspiration, some of you being our partners. Oh, sorry. No. No. Now, the first thing I want to do is thank our partners. This is the seventh quarter in a row that Nutanix has been named as the leader by IDC. Thank you, Mr. Shankar. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you. Thank you, all our partners. Seventh quarter in a row, we lead the market. Okay. Uh, this is a slide of our last quarter. And uh, we have close to 15,000 customers worldwide. And we complete 10 years as a startup this year. A startup which was incubated in 2009. Uh, and last year we finished with the revenue of approximately 1.4 million software. And uh, it's been a phenomenal journey of growth. Around 15,000 customers and we're delivering an NPS or a net promoter score of 90 plus. Nine more than 90 percent of our customers say they would recommend our services and our products to their peers in the industry. Right. Uh, we have a workforce of 5,000 approximately, uh, thousand of which are in India, and uh, uh, we, go, we are probably we are growing at a rate of 30 to 40 percent year over year. Uh, a list of our some of our customers here in, in India we have our. <laughs> Slightly above 500 customers here, and most of the top two or three accounts in every vertical is our customer. Uh, the 10 year journey, okay, and let's do something here. Interestingly, when we started in 2009, our idea was, and we started with just being an HCI here, we actually wanted the first app, as I was speaking earlier, was to make the storage in Kerala. Right. Before when we started, uh, if you really see, uh, we were always at the server, the, the sands which is the storage, it was a big market right down there. And parallelly, if you see the consumer market, the smartphone which was being developed was actually eating, the software was eating the hardware. And if you see the smartphone, it ate, it ate into a GPS device, it ate into camera, it ate, ate into a lot of other stuff that you were using in the hardware. Today you don't even, don't even need a watch behind the camera. Now, when we started, when we actually started, uh, we actually started just being an HCI player. Took the concept of hyperconvergence, right, and brought the storage to becoming an app. That's when we started in 2009. Slowly we grew, slowly we grew into the core data center, robot data centers, remote office, branch offices. And it's, we kept growing through 20, 2009, 2015, 2016. And come, and all the while, if you really see the footprint, the location, the services, this was our vision. And this is something that we ad advocated. I, I, in Newtonic for the last four years, and you'll actually see that this is what we were advocating. We were saying we'll, be, you know, we'll create the public cloud experience in the private cloud. We said this. We said we will be a multi cloud player. We can actually run Newtonic for any cloud. If this was something that we actually laid down to the vision around four years ago. Slowly but surely, we actually expanded our footprint into the cloud. The first cloud that we actually expanded our footprint into was the public cloud, was GCP, Google Cloud. Again, last year, I mean this, week, this year somewhere during our dot text which was in uh, May, we announced that we will actually be able, you will actually be able to run Nutanix not only in your data center, you will actually be able to run it right into it, the AWS cloud. And we are actually making it, making it a reality. It's a reality today. You could power on a Nutanix <laughs> cluster into your AWS. And the best part, is the control plane which is preserved, which is basically controls our on current cloud in the expanded to the to the public cloud. Now, when you actually expand it to the public cloud, one of the key components to be expanded is not is your network, is your secure network. And that's what we have customers to as well. And today, 
And beyond 2019, what we envisage and what our vision is to offer object as a service, files as a service, contact as a service, VR as a service, everything on prem and on prem mode, <coughs> melting the public cloud and the private cloud. And the best part is the experience. Why do customers buy you, your view or your product? It's basically because the experience that you deliver to them, the superior experience, which nobody else is delivering. And that's what we've been successful in doing. And beyond 2019, we actually want to cover every cloud that's there in the industry. Right from the data center to the edge locations, whether it's public or it, and everything at the surface with different consumption models. The best part is you will have a consumption model that suits your need. Now, what this means is basically Nutanix is going to be the enterprise cloud platform in your data center. And everything below that enterprise cloud platform is an NPV. It's an NPV that we can manage from a single source of truth, from a single orchestration layer. Whether it's a distributed cloud, or a public cloud, or your edge cloud, or your own web cloud. Now, this is again, I just go back to where we started. We started with just the core, and what we call the essentials is basically the private cloud and the enterprise, which is a multi cloud layer. We actually started, if I actually go back to the product line, we actually started here in 2009. The core, the Acropolis operating system, the hypervisor system. This is where we started and this is where we were in almost the first four or five years of our evolution. And since the last three and a half to four years, we have exponentially grown to actually bring to you a lot of products that were hardware in your data center. If you actually look at a NAS storage, it was hardware, you needed controllers. If you had an object storage, you needed another set of controllers. Right? If you needed, uh, you know, for example, a VDI, you would have had to buy, buy hardware to run it. But today, we are actually able to do and deliver all of that to you as a service within your data center or external to it. Now, how do we have customers? Now, the Nutanix approach is nothing, is similar, think of it. Think of running your data center as a Lego block. Right? Every block can be interchanged, every block can be removed. Right? From the hardware, to the hypervisor, to the network, to the security layer, can be ripped and released. We are not binding you to any particular technology in your data center. And that's one of the appeals that our customers love. That's one of the features that our customers love. Okay. Now if you see, Nutanix is the binding fabric for any Lego block. And if when I say a Lego block, for me a VMware is a Lego block. I don't care whether you run a VMware or a Hyper-B, or an AHP, or a container. Or below our enterprise cloud stack, you will be running in a place for all I care. It just has just another engine that we can manage for you and you can treat it as, a, as just another engine. It doesn't matter if your app is today running on database or Azure or GCP or it's a container. Right? And as apps get containerized, as the millennials start writing apps and the non monolithic apps, the microservices based apps, this mobility of your application, irrespective of the cloud, is basically going to drive the needs of business. And that's how the new apps are being developed. I mean, I don't know for millennials who say, I'm going to develop an app on Oracle with the Oracle database. He's probably looking at open source, open source more SQL, NPP database to run his app on. Right? Cut his application into multiple containers and not a monolithic application. Again, it's not to say that monolithic is right and microservices may be wrong. It just depends on what you want to do. Right? But that's how each ego block, every component of this slide can be written from the hardware here to your hypervisor 
do anything the cloud orchestration layer, even the cloud orchestration layer we don't buy to the virus. You can actually buy, take our cloud orchestration layer or take each of our components and actually do an API integration into any cloud layer that you want. We have today customers who are actually taking our orchestration layer because we can actually manage multiple of multiples of this cloud. Multiple of this cloud. Okay. Here is what we realized recently. Okay. We did a survey of around 2,000 customers. We believe in a hybrid cloud world, 73% customers want to actually come back on correct. And why is that? The single biggest factor is flexibility, flexibility and control. And at the end of the day, also uh, the financial conditions, the, the, the money required to run, uh, run your application on the cloud. We believe, even if you speak to Gartner, when I was at Gartner, some of the Gartner uh, analysts said, a cloud has a 6x to 7x multiple over a 5x year, a public cloud. Sorry? Running an application into public cloud has a 6x to 7x multiple over a 5 year period. Of course, it depends. I mean, it depends. Yes, I'm, I'm not asking you. Yeah. Sure. Of course, I'm not debating, I'm not debating and discussing that. If you really see a lot of startups actually go into the public cloud and it makes sense. A lot of applications make sense to go into the cloud rather than being on prem So there is not a debate versus what is right and what is wrong. Both are correct and both could be wrong, depending on almost where you are situated. Right? But any customer I've spoken to, what the choice? What's the experience of a public cloud even if you're running it in your other private cloud? And that's the promise of the technology. And lastly, the choice of consumption. It's all about consumption model. You want an on-prem model with appliances? You want an on-prem model with software only? Or you want a subscription model or a services model? That's how you could consume our services. You could consume data as an appliance or a software or the service. Right? Yeah. And lastly, we have partnerships. We have partnerships with the likes of Lenovo. We have partnerships with the likes of HP, our latest partnership. We have partnerships with the likes of Fujitsu. Again, it's a choice. We have partner our latest partnership is with HP, a global partnership. Uh, we have appliances running on HP systems. HP also has an offering on Nutanix with that greenery consumption model. It's a customer's choice what they want to choose. They want to choose our clients, they want to choose the software, they want to do the service. It's up to you. And all the goodnesses that we spoke about in terms of the legal cloud approach of a public cloud or a private cloud are available. It doesn't change anything. Right? Flexible capacity, workload solutions, hybrid cloud, take your choice. And that's about it, sir. I had 20 minutes, closed it in, I think, 14 minutes. That's what generally mechanics does. It's pretty simple. Okay? Try using it. And uh, advise your customers. We generally read what are we come upon. Thank you so much. <laughs>